Right there guys, so this is part two of the Lego 75301 Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. Complete with other random characters. Well, I suppose random characters, but uh, yeah. You do also get Princess Leia, um, that old general who no, no one can remember the name, and well, we've already done R2, but uh, very Doc Brown, this guy. Let me just put him together. And uh, Carrie Fisher never quite lived down that hair, did she? At least this character is not anatomically correct, dear lord. There are models which are, well, I'm pretty sure Carrie Fisher would say, you don't know what my, uh... anyway. So, there you go. Again, flesh tone characters. Let's see if they've got, yep. And again, they've done the thing using the hair to create two different facial expressions, which are basically old man with, with mouth closed, old man with mouth open. So, a bit pointless really, but I suppose they've just got to go with the gimmick. So, just to show again, here is part one, and we're now going to be building the rear module for it, I think. So. Put him here and let's get started. Yes, I must admit I am a little bit tempted to disassemble some of the Lego models I've already done and reassemble them on camera, which I suppose does pass the time, but maybe a little disingenuous. Because I've got this, I've got an A Wing, a TIE Fighter, and that's it so far. I'm not sure what else they've made. I'm going to have to have a look at some point. There's probably a B-Wing around somewhere, though God knows how you'd put it down somewhere. And this is the point when, of course, I obligatory grumble at my teenage self for selling my Action Fleet um, models, which I'm not going to forgive the little shit for. But, uh, anyway... Okay, so that's, ah, then it goes under there. That's, right, there we go. Yeah, I think I sold them on the car boot, so I was about computer parts, which, uh, just, I had all the set, I had most of the set, I had a lot of the set. I had a sufficient number of sets, I'll put it that way, anyway. I have started, I've started to collect them again, but uh, it feels a bit bad uh, because I'm not the kind of collector that, sa that saves the box. Well, that's not the kind of collector that saves the boxes. I hoard boxes, but not necessarily for this kind of thing. But uh, so I suppose I'm going with the Lego instead because the Lego Star Wars ones are sufficiently popular that I could probably work out what I can disassemble and reassemble for them. Um, I have had a look at Bricklink, and there are some models I would love to have a go at. I kind of like the idea of the, someone's done a first generation Lego Walkman, which, oh, that's a nice looking piece of equipment. That uh, Sony really knocked that out of the park with the first one. The original Walkman is a beautiful piece of kit, which, um, yeah, their 80s stuff was fantastic. I mean, the 90s stuff was good as well, but, it just feels like you just don't make kit like that anymore. You know, aluminium casing, not plastic. It was lovely. It really was. I mean, <laughs> I suppose the immediate thing I was thinking of, which is maybe not quite the right reference, is American Psycho, where he has a little, almost like a shrine to the damn thing. Because it's uh, it's his status symbol, which seems a little absurd nowadays. Because, but having, even now, having a first generation Walkman is quite a thing to have. I mean, I'd love to have one in good working order. Though, the thing I genuinely wish I had was, I mean, I, uh, let's see, was that one or two of those? Two of those. Spraxy again, the better of my knolling caused me to drop it. That's what I'm looking for. What I'd love to have would be the Flamingo, which was their little portable record player, but 
even in broken condition, that's hundreds of pounds. And it just isn't, yeah. Tech Manager had done things on it before, and he said he had one that he rebuilt for a video. So I suppose he had reason to purchase one because it meant that he it was essentially, it was his, his job in a way. But even he said, it's not worth it. People wanted to see the, him build a flamingo, so he built him uh, restore a flamingo, so he restored one. But he said, it ain't worth it for what, what you got. I just wish they'd re-release the damn thing. I mean, <sighs> no one does the parts anymore. That's the problem. Even if even if Sony do have the do have the uh, designs. Sorry, just double checking that I'm not uh, going off camera. But, uh, so the one disadvantage of doing it this way is I used. You know, I probably will try for the next model doing it via webcam so I can actually see myself. Um, but we'll see. And we're back. Sorry about that. Computer emergency needed to be an emergency. So where was I? Okay, so this is, I think this is part of the mechanism to move the wings. I think they refer to them as S foils. For some reason, even though they're an X X fours, anyway. Uh, you know that was never made. That was something which they just sort of did, and it never quite made sense. Was why did they have to? Did the wings have to move around? I mean, okay, the wings have to move around because they look cool, but it was sort of like, hmm, it seems a bit of an odd thing to do. But uh, okay, so I'm gonna have to concentrate for a second to get this right. Um, Let's see if I understand how that holds. Ah, right. Yeah, I think I understand that now. So that goes there and that goes there and then there's like a scissoring motion, I think. Second, as this is a complicated bit, and there we go. So, yeah, that's going to be part of the. There we go. So, you, I think the intention is that there's going to be a button which allows you to fan out the wings, basically, or S falls, whatever the hell they call them. and that's going to do something in a second as well and something I have noticed they tend to do a lot more in the, in, in the current so to have bright colors for non structural well, for internal structural parts I suppose just to differentiate more than anything else because it's not missing the outside of the model, so you can get away with using bright colors. And that seems to be how they do it. And so it wants two of those, so we might as well just make them up now. Put those together. So those are going to be the other parts at the risk of being uh, uh, 
Okay, so I see. So you get these are going to be the, the wing mountings, which are going to be in parallel with each other. So yeah. It's a, yeah, so that's, I think that's what that is for. And then this is going to be the other end of the locking mechanism by the looks of it. Let's see if I can, it's basically repeating that underneath so that the whole thing does tie together correctly. Yeah, isn't that quite ingenious actually? Um, I think Lego probably has more moving parts than it used to. And I don't know. I mean, sort of going back, it must be kind of a bit, it must be strange being a long term Lego engineer. Or Lego engineer? Lego. What do they call them? Uh, Master builders. So it must be weird being a long term Lego master builder and just seeing all these changes over the years, seeing how these things have altered. Right, so. There we go. So I think now. I don't know if there's going to be a way to lock them together. I'm assuming there will be. Because it's still, it, it, you don't want to be, you don't want to be wonky. Uh, okay, so there's your press plate. He wants me to put on ten and eleven. So I think I put that. Try and get them as straight as possible without getting my head in the front of the camera. Mind, it should come off relatively easily. Yep, it's not stuck down too hard yet. That way, right? Okay. I know it doesn't matter that much, but it, but it's uh, so that we get it at least reasonably straight and reasonably in the right area. I mean, this is me we're talking about, and honestly, to do this properly, you probably need tweezers. But uh, I ain't quite that proud. It'll do. If I <laughs> put it this way, if I bought a model that was this ropey with it, and I'd be annoyed. But uh, if I'm doing it myself, yeah. There we go. And that way up, and he slides in like that. Oh yeah, it does work. So if you push down there, it does pop all the wings up. I see. So that has actually got it. So it's all in line. That's holding the mech. Those pins are holding the mechanism together. Okay. So next bit. So odd if worked on something like Star Wars. You know, put your whole heart and soul into something like this, and then it's sort of the entire industry warps around it, and then I mean I suppose you just go on to the next project. You can't just sit there and go, do I've moved my magnum opus, I'm gonna fall over now. I mean Okay, Orson Wells did that to a degree, and I suppose that's more of a warning, so uh, don't do that. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like I have a photo which has become my magnum opus. It's seen more than any other photo I've ever taken, I think. But uh, never mind. Seems to be you've typed in blonde. What well, used to be on Google, if you type in blonde tattooed woman, then I was on the first page. Not me. Um, 
Lauren, Lauren, Lorraine. Anyway, I did meet the lady eventually. Uh, she ain't blonde anymore. Um, lovely lady. Uh, has tattoos like dogs. I think she's got greyhounds, from what I can remember. Not that that's particularly important one way or the other, but um, I do remember it. Um, it's one of those weird things where a girl I went, used to go out with, he said, oh yeah, I kissed her once. I was like, oh, fine. Um, because Reading's not that big a place, and I suppose if you're into <laughs> into girls and alternative music, you're gonna you're gonna bump into people eventually. Uh, is there a little void? Okay, so there's a void there, which uh, which you don't need to fill everything in every time. But um, yeah, let me make sure I get this the right way because this is something where I could easily do it upside down. Doodly do. So, ah, there it is. Oh, I see. So it's going to pop in. It's, okay, so that's going to make me sort of held up as a, again, a greebly. And there we go. And so he pops again using. Ah, oh, sorry, that is to. hold all that together there you go so that's holding the wing mechanism in place and build the structure around it by the looks of it mm. uh, oh okay I would have thought those would be for the lasers but apparently not but, um, I suppose it would have been a little bit preemptive at this point so that's Okay. Um, not quite sure what that. Not quite sure what this function is, but whatever. I'll go with it. This is an old piece. I think I had this or something similar for the space shuttle back in the day. Um, so back when I Lego a little less ambitious. It was a space a space shuttle on a truck. I mean, it wasn't exactly a big one. It was. Uh, it just seems a bit odd now. Um, number two goes. It's an odd thing with just remember with Star Wars is the fact that their writing system. They have their own separate writing system, which of course, you know, a society like that would not be using English, but uh, they only decided on it after the second, um, during the second film. So they had to go back and optically change a whole bunch of stuff in the first one, where you can see, you know, dashboards and things. But it, they get round it by making it symbolic. They sort of go, okay, you know, you can't, there are no numbers or anything, but you do see sort of like graphs and things going up and down, which I suppose is a perfectly cromulent way to do it. And there we go. Again, not sure. I think that must, I think that might just be for aesthetics, which is a little deep inside Jennifer's aesthetics. Apologies for the noise, I should have muted that. That's telling me to do the time sheets that I don't need to do because I'm not at work. Because um, I'm on holiday. I've been in Wales for a week, which I did do a bunch of videos when I was out there, but none of them have worked because of this mucking thing, which I have now spoken to Sennheiser and expressed my displeasure. And we'll see what they say. I've told them exactly what went wrong. Um, but now we're using... What's it called? I think this is, I think I'm using Open Camera, uh, which is the app that I'm using on my phone, and it seems to be working relatively well. It gives, it, gives it a lot more control than the standard than the standard camera, which a lot of the time I don't care, but for video has actually been really useful. Um, 
So we've got some digital stabilization built in, which is nice. And right. Okay, so that's a little bit extra structure just to show the whole thing together. And again, strange mystery piece always seems to happen with these. So there's the front end, and that's the key thing we put together there. So the wings will pop out, and you will be able to press a button, and it'll open and close. And that's actually, I was a little concerned that that, that was going to be a bit stiff, but it's actually not bad, and does, it's, well, you've got the fact that the Lego is milled to within an inch of its life, or molded, or whatever, and so, I mean, hell, even the little mold lines you can see are practically not there. But uh, yeah, that is part two. And I might leave part three till tomorrow. The light is dying a little bit, but um, I am tempted to continue. We'll see. Probably this will be. We'll see. If the lighting changes, then I've moved it till tomorrow, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.